It is 7.24. I'm here in Liverpool at the Labour Party conference. One issue that the Labour Labour leadership has felt pressure on is trans rights. Keir Starmer has moved on the issue after attacks from Conservatives and some of his own MPs. He now argues that trans people should still get a medical diagnosis before they can change their legal sex. You'll remember that was a big issue in Scotland. He also said this summer that a woman is an adult female. That is common sense to some, but a dog whistle anti-trans remark to others. Well, one gender-critical activist thinks Starmer hasn't gone far enough. Kelly Jane Keane, who's also known as Posey Parker, organised a rally outside uh, the conference where there are arguments with trans activists she he joins us now. Good morning to you. Good morning. Um, tell us where you are on Keir Starmer's position, first of all. Do you think he has made an important sea change in terms of his um, attitude towards women and towards, I suppose, uh, transgender issues as well? I think had he not allowed the bullying of Rosie Duffield, I'd probably take him a little bit more seriously. But I think he's, um, I think he's incredibly weak. I think the fact that only a couple of years ago when he thought it was more politically expedient to pretend he didn't know what a woman is, um, is a little more important. And just because he slightly changed his tune on that because he's perhaps decided to stop being so dishonest, um, I, I, it's just not good enough. I, I, this stuff has to be out of schools. We have to stop lying to children. Uh, we have to stop pretending that there's anything such as trans rights. This is women's rights. This is an issue about women's rights and the safeguarding of children. Um, and it's it's kind of irrespective of what we call the opposition um, or what they think they call themselves. But trans rights, as far as I'm concerned, is the, the right to, for, for men to access female-only spaces and the right to lobby groups yeah. To enter our schools and indoctrinate children into this, but, but you uh, must draw. You must draw. A, you must draw a distinction there. Surely, there are people. There are trans people who want to to live their lives uh, uh, happily and peacefully. Uh, aren't especially politicised. Aren't campaigning for things that you disagree with. And trans rights there has a very specific meaning. That's the meaning of people just to be allowed to live quietly in the way that they want to. That you must respect as someone who who, who respects women's rights. Must respect there's a category of people there called trans who have their own rights as well. That's no more than than, than human well, decency. You, well, no, I don't think there is a category of people called trans. I think there might be some people who refer to themselves as trans, but I don't really know what the differentiation would be between most people and people who call themselves trans. So you don't believe there's uh, a genuine way. So you don't believe there is a, there is a, someone called a genuine trans person, someone who has changed their, their gender, uh, someone who's gone through that whole process and is living happily a life in the gender other than the one that, into which they were born and that person is just called a trans person. I believe there are people that have cosmetic surgeries, quite invasive cosmetic surgeries, and wish to call themselves by different names. Whether I believe that person then has the right to enter a space, so if it's a man, whether he has the right then to enter a female-only space is a totally different issue. And I, I absolutely do not think that any man ever has the right to enter a private female-only space. Um, what happened at the rally? Because... Um, um it sounded like there were some some arguments, there were some disputes. But how would you characterise what happened? Look, wherever we go, wherever women go to talk about their rights, whether it was a Jewish woman talking about her uh, Jewish ancestry or women talking about being raped or women talking about their children being dragged into this, uh, what I see as a, a pernicious ideology, which means they want to self-harm and remove healthy body parts, uh, we get faced with a, a, a large number of majority men um, not all of them even looking like they're there for a, a purpose other than to shout obscenities at women. Um, and they try and intimidate us and they want to stop us talking. And that is not something that should be uh, allowed in a in a liberal democracy. Women or anybody for that matter should be allowed to peacefully, I, I don't mean celebrate murder in the streets, but we should peacefully be allowed to assemble and talk about our rights without men wanting to intimidate us and prevent us from doing so. And Are you concerned... You know, are you concerned uh, about, you know, this is a culture war and therefore your side of the, the debate attracts people who are in it, not necessarily because they, they want to support women's rights, they're in it for the culture war, they're in it for the argument that your rallies are said to have attracted members of, of the far right, of conspiracy theorists. Are you ever worried about fellow travellers in the movement because you have a very specific goal that you, you've just articulated, but you might attract people from all sorts of sides, um, um, some of which may be pretty unattractive? Well, look, I, I'm a campaigner. I hope to attract every single human person uh, on this on this earth uh, that actually a woman is an adult human female and we're entitled to dignity, safety, respect and privacy. So 
whether those people will be people I, I agree with on other issues is is a different matter. I can't help being, you know, I can't help being attractive to anybody uh, and the words that I say. So, no, it's not something that concerns me. I know I'm right. Uh, I'm uh, I'm 100 percent right. I have absolutely uh, no doubt that most people do not want uh, a man who calls himself a woman in spaces with their elderly mother, uh, with their young daughter, with their wives, with their sisters, with their aunties, with any single woman that they have any care for. So uh, I think this idea that there's a lot of people worried uh, about men accessing women's spaces and, and being on the side of those men, I think it's an absolute nonsense. Uh, um, not, nobody wants that. I'm sitting in a, just fine, I'm sitting in, in a Labour Party conference right now. On one side of the room are male and female toilets. On the other are unisex toilets for everybody, it says on, on the wall. They've clearly been adapted just for this conference. Um, is that good? Is that a good thing that there are options for everyone? One side is split, one side isn't. Is that a sensible compromise? What do you make of it? Look, I, I was in a theatre the other night, a very small theatre in Bristol, and I was I happened to be in a unisex toilet. I thought it was a women's toilet because most men had chosen to go to the other so-called unisex toilet. And in that moment, I just thought, what if I was in that queue and it was six men and just me? Or what if it was my 17-year-old daughter in that queue? Uh, unisex toilets, uh, when there are provisions of male and female toilets and people have a choice, uh, why not? Uh, but otherwise, unisex toilets do present a, a danger to women. Uh, Kelly Jenkin, thank you for joining us this morning. Thanks so much. That's Kelly Jenkin there, known as Posey Parker, talking about uh, the rally she attended, her view on it, and how she thinks she's 100% right about this issue. Uh